Hey, hello YouTubers. This is Kat from an itty bitty homestead. And today this is part two of making dog food. Um, this is one batch that I've cooked up. I've gotten distracted a little bit. Um, my camera ran out of room um, with the other video. So I had to go and upload stuff onto my computer. Anyway, I won't bore you with all that. So this is... Uh, 10 pounds of turkey meat and mixed vegetables and um, the egg, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, you know, I, I need someone to write me a script and then I can just read it. Anyway, um, I'm gonna go ahead and make up the second batch. And in the meantime, since this has been sitting here um, for a bit, it's cooled down, I can handle it with my hands. I am um, heating up my jars at the moment just to m m make sure that there's, you know, nothing in them although I know you don't really need to do that anymore if you're going to pressure can because um, no critters can actually survive pressure canning so uh, if you do it right um, but at any rate um, I am going to go ahead and just heat them up just so that they're a little warm because these this is warm but not hot uh, and I'm going to cook up the second batch and then I'm going to go run an errand while it cools and um, then hopefully this will be emptying We'll can it all up. So I'll bring you back um, as soon as I get my jars ready and I can start filling them and show you what I do. Thanks. Okay, I'm back. Um, so you can see I'm browning the second uh, uh, 10 pounds of ground turkey. I went ahead and added, I had a partial bag of um, Brussels sprouts left over from um, my dinner last night, uh, uncooked. And so... Um, I went ahead and ran them through my little dicer and added them. Oops, raw. So, because they'll cook while they're um, uh, being canned. So that's half there, and then I added the rest to this concoction in here. So I'm going to go ahead and give this a real fast stir. Bring it down. There we go. Oof! Oh my goodness, if only. I could just do something. This is the second mess I've made with this today. Second one. All right. And I can't just leave it. It's not in my nature. So, um, let me just see if I can finish stirring this up without spilling any more, sending it flying. Good God. I have to add a uh, back backsplash, I think. Um, this is my new part of my kitchen. So, I'm still... Um, really fussy about keeping it really really tidy but um, and mostly because I do all my canning over on this side now um, it's partially why I, I made this addition um, and this used to uh, don't mind the mess I'm painting a china cabinet but this used to be a wall a solid wall um, so I cut an opening I've got two bar stools on the other side and um, as soon as I put my china cabinet back together uh, that counter will be cleared off all right all right let me clean this up I can't stand it all right um, I'm gonna just start filling some of these jars because um, they're a little hot but um, I've decided since I'm letting this cool I'm letting the second batch cool so I'm not gonna preheat my water um, I'm and I like I said I have to run an errand in about 10 minutes and then um, I'll be back in about 20 and I'll finish this but I wanted to go ahead and just get started filling these jars. Now I'm retaining, I'm not draining off whatever liquid came off of this. Oh, it's gonna be too good. All right, hold on one second. Plan B. Okay. Um, because I'm going to add, I'm going to try and um, add the broth from both of these, just combine it all together, and, and just add it to the jars with some water, a little bit of water. Uh, so I think I've pretty much cooked the bejeebies out of this, so um, really nothing left. So I'm going to try and pack this down. Just because I want to try and get... Um, as much in each jar as possible 
uh, not so packed that the center won't get uh, cooked a little bit as well. Um, but outside of the vegetables, pretty much everything is cooked, um, or at least partially cooked. Eggs are fully cooked. Uh, turkey meat is more than halfway cooked. I'm not seeing a lot of pink. Like I said, I don't think I would eat it quite like this. Um, but now, and you want to keep one inch of headspace, which if you're new to canning, one inch stops right here. Okay? So that looks pretty good. And it will compress um, as it's cooking. So um, after you take it out of the canner, it's going to it's going to compress, and then this will be all nice, filled with nice, beautiful uh, liquid. So I'm not going to put the lids on because I don't want to boil the water yet. Do that all at once. See, there's a lot of juice in here already. Yeah. You know, you want to do this. You want to try and keep your lids, um, and not your lids, the rims of your jars as uh, oil free as possible. I probably shouldn't be dropping this in there just because it'll touch the rim. And I don't really want any failures. Um, although if it happens, it happens. It's just go into the fridge. Now I usually, um, I try to wait the 24 hours before I take the rings off. Um, but if I'm doing meat, in about 12 hours, I will um, gently test the top of the lids, and if they're not if they're not down, um, then I, I I pretty much assume it's not going to seal anyway. So um, I will then just go ahead and and throw it into the fridge. Just because um, I don't want to leave meat out for 24 hours or 23 hours I'm a little bit uh, oops a little bit paranoid okay that looks good so if you press it down as you can see whoops no maybe you can't see so that's to the one inch headspace you can see it's it's packed but not over packed there's still air in here so I will have to when I add liquid debubble all these um, but yeah, okay, so I won't bore you while I'm doing this, and I probably should get going anyway. Um, and I will bring you back when I have all the jars filled, and I'm going to get ready to add the rings and put it into the canner. Okay? When I went to go get my pint and a half, I had a whole case hiding underneath um, that were already sterilized and ready to use. So I have added um, just a little bit of water to each jar, and I this is the last one for me to um, debubble. And this one's a little shy, so I'm going to peruse my other jars, and uh, let me go get a spoon. I'm going to see what I can filter from other jars just to make them more within the uh, one inch of headspace that we need. If you're gonna use metal inside of these jars like I'm doing, um, just be really careful. One tap the wrong way and you just destroy the jar and the contents. Um, okay, I think that looks good. Alright, I'm going to wash up my hands real quick. <laughs> you clean it up for me again? Are you cleaning up? Alright, my cleanup crew is here, with, ready to go to work. Alright, so these are all my um, lids. I'm not sure what you can see. I don't even know where I have you pointed. I need to point it at my cleanup crew. Okay. So these are my lids that I've put into um, very hot water, and they've been sitting for a while, so it's not that hot anymore. Um, vinegar, clean paper towel. Now I can get rid of this. Okay, I've washed my hands with hot soapy water to um, remove any oils from my fingers. 
Yeah, now let's just start wiping. I won't make you sit through all this, but we'll just do a couple. So you wipe it really good, the generous amount. You can see there was some spinach on there. Probably go through several uh, paper towels. I also like to wipe the inside just a little bit because when it boils up, I feel like if the lid is floating a little bit, a little speck of something will um, get underneath it. Okay, got a lid. That on at this point, I don't touch anything. Finger tight, or if you have one of these, put that on. There we go. All right, there's one job. Okay, let's do one more. And then I will bring you back when I'm getting ready to put these all into the canner or after I have them in the canner. This spinach is kind of a pain in the butt. You may look at me doing this and say, oh, no, I, I don't actually get fails that often. Um, I do get them, but not that often. And I think um, a lot of my fails come from not sealing the jar correctly with the, the ring, um, and also for me overfilling it with um, liquid. So, um, all right, I'm gonna go get some extra paper towels, and I will bring you back when these are all in the canners. Okay, all the jars are in my two canners. Um, I actually couldn't fit all of them. Uh, so these are just gonna have to go in the fridge because I'm not gonna run another canner load. Um, I mean, there's nothing else I'm canning at the moment. So, uh, really disappointed. But anyway, it won't go to waste. Um, might actually transfer one of these to a plastic bag and stick it in the freezer. Um, yeah, anyway, let me show you the canner. So here's my, my big canner, 26 quart. I don't know what it is. Uh, it's, it's the big one, the Presto big one. And it is two layers full. Here is the smaller version that I just got. This was one of my uh, Craigslist purchases. And it's full as well. Unfortunately, I can't uh, I can't stack them. I need to too tall. But if I was doing four ounce jars, I certainly can. All right. I will see y'all in about two hours when I take these out and they're sitting in their beautiful canned glory on my counter. All right. Oh, I wanted to show you just for laughs. This <laughs> this is what happens when you cook for your dogs. Do you see this? If you don't think this is not making me on the bit on the neurotic side, oh, you don't know me. Okay, you really don't know me, but this is making me nuts. So um, as soon as the lids go on these canners, um, I am going to start working on this. Now, I did want to go over, just in case um, you've stopped by my channel and this is your first time canning or you're thinking about canning, one thing you want to do every single time is make sure that this, let's see, can you see that? Yeah, make sure this hole is clear. So you should be able to see light through it. You put it up to your eye, see light through it. Make sure everything else is working. That's popping up, that's still in good shape. And that's the hole you were just checking. So this will go, let's see if you can see that. Yeah, you line up the arrows. Twist it shut and crank up the heat. But now you want to bring this to a boil to bring it up to steam. So um, my my pressure is um, eleven pounds, but because I use a jiggling uh, weight, uh, it ten pounds. But um, I'll I'm going to vent this for ten minutes. It means a steady flow of steam coming out of this hole for 10 solid minutes. Then I'm gonna pop this on, wait for the, wait for this to start jiggling, but I also use the um, the meter here, the gauge, sorry. And when that hits 10 pounds of pressure, I will then start my timer for 75 minutes. Okay, so, 
So I'll set that there and let me go ahead and do the other one. So there you go, same thing. Check the blowhole, as I like to call it. Oh, I just want to tell you, about every three or four times I use this, I take a little Vaseline and run it along here. Uh, it keeps this from cracking and it also makes it easier to get this on and off. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get this on. Okay. Turn that one up. All right, now I started them both at the same time. Maybe they'll come at the same process at the same time. I have no idea. We'll see. All right, see you later. This, these are from the uh, larger of the two pressure cookers. And as you can see, um, I have quite a bit of siphoning. So I guess I probably don't add water to these when I do them. I can never remember. I am such a scatterbrain. And if I write it down somewhere, it won't matter because I won't remember where I wrote it down and I won't remember to look at it. Probably should try anyway, but um, I think I'm good on dog food for a little while. Uh, one of these jars last about five days. So, um, so anyway, a um, lot of siphoning here. I'm hoping. I mean, I'm here pinging, so I'm hoping they're all going to seal. I'll know in a while. And this is from the smaller uh, of the pressure canners, and um, definitely not as much siphoning. So let me go show you the water. Believe it or not, I actually had this kitchen cleaned up. So this is the big one, and as you can see, siphoning. Whoops, sorry, steamed. Yep. This is the smaller one, and as you can see, the water's pretty clean. So I don't know why that happened. Um, and honestly, it seems that the top, the top layer, uh, siphoned the worse. So um, I'm just going to let these cool down and then I'll give them a good scrub with some hot soapy water and um, I'll clean the lids and all that. All right. Um, it's been about three hours, three and a half hours since I took these out of the canners. Um, and uh, just barely touching the lids. Um, they've all sealed. Even that really, really... Where's my finger? That really gross one. So I'm really happy right now. So these will sit.